Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I've got one of the Caradron Overlords, a member of the Arcanaut companies here. These guys are basically the foot soldiers of the Caradron and they are pretty cool. They were first introduced to me. <laughs> Somebody said, imagine if Danny DeVito played a Ferengi. And then I read their lore and that actually turned out to be pretty close. Uh, some people sort of think that Sky Dwarf is a slightly weird combination, but imagine for a second if we take everything that we think is true about dwarfs, their ingenuity, their stubbornness, their lust for riches, and then you tell them, instead of having to dig in the dirt, all that gold you want is in the sky? Come on, that's not hard to imagine. Now luckily, these guys are also super easy to paint, so let's get a quick look at how I've done this, and the base as well. So to begin with, I've given him a base coat of Lead Belcher Spray, and this will work for just about any of the metallic armoured uh, barracks, skyports. Over the top of that, I've then given him a thin coat of Lead Belcher just to make sure that it was all even and what have you. So you can use this as a tidy up stage later on if you need to as well. Over that, we're going to do a little bit of Balthazar Gold for any brassy details we want to do. So there are a few icons and just any sort of weapon bits that you want to, you know, look a little bit fancier. You can use Balthazar Gold. Corn Red, we're going to do his jumpsuit. Um, I don't know what you'd call it. It looks like a boiler suit, <laughs> really. But, you know, the pressure suit that they're wearing, we're going to base coat that with Corn Red. Mournfang Brown will be all of the leather details, except for his boots, which we'll do with Rhinox Hide. Then we're going to do this little itty bitty, uh, I guess, clan marking on his shoulder. That's going to be Rakarth Flesh. And then a couple of minor details, we're going to prepare them with some white scar. They're not going to be white, but that's going to be the most useful thing we can put down to start them off. Then, our good friend Agrax Earthshade, all over the model. So, we've got the lead belcher out of the way. Let's get started with some Balthazar Gold and paint some fancy bits. Now, with your basic Arcanauts, you don't have to do a huge amount of this. Just pick out a few icons that you want to really shine. Uh, basically, the more important they are, <laughs> the more gold they've got on them. Now, you don't need to be too careful, except when you get up around the face. Um, I might swap down to a smaller brush for this if I were a smarter person. There's this little faceplate in gold. And again, you can add more of this if you want your guy to be the, uh, the leader of the company. I do suggest that these power plant things have a little bit more brassiness to them, because they look pretty cool to offset all of that silver. But... However you decide to do it, this will be different on each model. So cruise around and pick out bits that you want to be in Balthazar Gold now. So there we can see it's actually a fairly limited amount of brass that we've put on. I think you want to leave a little bit of room to maneuver as far as putting more gold onto your more important dwarfs. Now at any rate, what I've got here is my corn red and we're going to paint in his jumpsuit. Now don't worry too much if you do end up going over the straps. The only thing you want to avoid is the metal. If you can. I mean, we can tidy that up later anyway. So start up close to it and then just draw along any metallic areas or paint away from them. Try always to move in towards the center of these larger areas of color if you can. When you get to these smaller areas, like along his arms and what have you, you might want to swap on down to a smaller brush. But again, don't worry too much if you do go a little bit overboard. Now that corn red will generally go on in one coat. It covers really well over lead belcher, so it's part of the reason why I picked it for my color scheme. Now you may notice along the chest I've been a little bit messy, but always try and make a mess towards the areas that you're going to be painting next anyway, because, you know, we're not tidying up, we're just painting them. So I've got my Mournfang brown, and I'm now going to go around and fill in all of the leather details. Now this will change depending on which, you know, which of the models you're painting. Some of them have got a lot more pouches than others. But whichever it is, just get around now and fill these in. After that, you can move on to the leather of his boots. Now there isn't much of this, and this will change from model to model. Some have got like bigger plates welded to the front of their boots, for example. Some of them don't have these brown leather straps on the back. It's really a case of just seeing how the model of yours looks and getting on there now. But any of the leather that is visible, a couple of coats of Rhinox Hide. Now we'll do just a little bit of Rakarth flesh on that roundel on his left shoulder. This really <laughs> doesn't take much. There we go. Then we'll do just a couple of little glowing details. Now I'm going to do this little top nobble on his, uh, on his pack in white. 
Uh, now some of the packs will have like a recessed area that looks like it's the power plant. You can just get some white in there. And don't worry too much if you sort of splash the sides, because when we come to do the next step for this, you'll see what I mean with it doesn't matter if you make a little bit of a mess. Then you can go back to your lead belcher, and this is the last step really before we go on to the wash. It's just any of those areas that we might have made a mess of while we were painting on the other colours. Get in there and you can fix them up now. Get them looking metal again. It's inevitable on some of these models that you're going to end up with a little bit of uh, stray <laughs> stray paint. So don't worry too much if you do have to do some of this cleanup. Once that cleanup stage is complete and everything's dry, out comes the Agrax Earthshade. Get yourself a big brush because you're going to you know, mash the whole model in this. <laughs> so not being too careful, let's just make sure it ends up in all the recesses. But otherwise, you're just coating the whole model in Agrax Earthshade. And we've done this a few times by now, so get in there and let's fill it all in. Now while that's drying, we'll get a quick look at the highlight paints we're going to use. There's not too many of these, and some of them we're only going to need for a tiny amount. Now Iron Breaker is what we're going to use for the majority of the armor. And we're not going to use very much of this really, just enough to sort of smooth out some of those larger areas like his shoulder pads and the back of his, uh, back of his sword. Stormhose Silver is going to be for anything that we really want to glean. So, for example, his beard plate, <laughs> we're going to do that with Stormhose Silver. Wes Decker Red, we're going to do the, the jumpsuit. Scrape Brown for all the leather. Liberator Gold for the brass. Shabti Bone is going to be that tiny little roundel. You could probably even skip that if you don't want to do it. Then we're going to do a little bit of tidying up with some white scar. Uh, just that glowing thing on the back of his pack. Which we're then going to touch in with some Nilac Oxide. And Gillum and Blue to do his eyes. So, let's get him dry and see what we can do. And we've finally got a ton of depth and shading to this model. He looks really cool. I mean, you could even just base him up and put him on the table looking mostly like this, and that would not be too bad to get you started. I mean, they're really cool models. But let's get that iron breaker, and I'm going to just do a little bit around the larger sort of flatter areas of his armor. So I want to do in some of his shoulder pad, but leave a little bit up around the sort of the rusted bits. Well, not rusted, but darker bits. Just like that. Do the back of his uh, handguard there. Do his sword. And this is up to you. You can do as much or as little of this as you like. So I'm going to go around now and just fill in some of these areas with Iron Breaker. Now you might see I've used a fair bit of that. Uh, mostly because I like my guys to be fairly shiny. But you can put in a little bit less if you want. This is a step that's really quite personal. How do you want your guys to look? I'm now going to go on to Stormhost Silver. And there's really only a couple of places that I'm going to use this. And that's where I want that silver to really shine. So this beard plate. <laughs> I love this concept. Uh, the beard plate will make that shine. And we'll just do a little around the back of his weapon. Okay, just to, just to set him off. Make those bits look a little bit more impressive. Now when it comes to highlighting the red, you might find some areas that don't look as though they've got a lot of detail. So instead of just leaving them blank, get in with your brush and sort of do anywhere that looks like equipment might be pushing in against it. So a thin, fine line just around the edge of some of these red areas. And otherwise, you can highlight them normally by following those high points and creases. Okay, so I'm going to go around and just carefully fill in some of this red with my Wes Decker Red. Now it might seem like the front doesn't have much to do, but if you spin him around and have a look at his back, there's plenty of places where there's those nice deep creases and folds in his suit that you can really highlight. Helps bring that color up a bit, and I think, you know, it really makes a difference. Do spend a bit of time on this one. Now same too with the leather. I've got my scrag brown, and we're just going to pick out the extreme edges of some of these pouches. Let's get them on the camera there. That's probably a good idea. And as ever, I'm going to... Just align myself, so instead of painting across the model, I just drag in a straight line down it. You might find with Scrag Brown, it doesn't seem like it's covering particularly well when it goes on. But as that uh, sort of dries out and sharpens up a bit, you'll see it stands out much better. So I'm going to go around now, just carefully in the back of knuckles and pouches and what have you, 
fill in some of this leather. Now after that leather's done, we'll get a little bit of Liberator Gold and we'll just get in and do some of these little brass areas. You can be quite sparing with this because it'll be really bright when it goes on. So let's just go around now. We'll do the edges of some of these brassy materials. Now that that gold is properly shining, let's just get a little shafty bone and do the very edge of this round little. Definitely you have to do the whole thing. Now we'll just use a little bit of white scar to tidy up and brighten this bobbly bit on the back here. And we'll leave that to dry for a few minutes because the next step is going to involve it again. Now once that's dried, make sure you give your Nilac Oxide a really good shake because you want it to pick up some of the, the chalky goodness it's got in it. Get a little on your brush and you just want to paint around the bottom of this glowing deeply thing. And luckily we're into easy mode now. <laughs> just get yourself a little Gilliman Blue on the end of a brush and just dot it in over those eyes you've painted white. You might find you want to go in and give it another... Yeah, I'm going to give it a little bit more. Then when all of those things are dry and we've done our base, our Caradron Overlord, our Arconaut here, is complete. But there's something else I wanted to show you, and that's why I've sort of stuck around here past the end, because I've been using lately Valhalla and Blizzard, and I really like this stuff. Now I've got here a couple of the grass tufts from Army Painter, and I'm using these in particular because they stand up quite well, and the, the bristles on them are fairly stiff which is really good for what I've got in mind. So I've got here my old pot of Valhalla and Blizzard. It's got, a, it's got a funny old texture. It is a texture paint, so it's similar to the likes of your still and mud and what have you, but it dries with a slightly glassy sort of finish to it. So what you want to do is get yourself an old brush, like I've got an old medium base brush here, and just sort of start dumping it on the base and add more as you go. Then when you get to the tufts, stick a little bit of it into there as well. So I'm going to go around now and I'm going to ice up this base. And with a generous helping of that Valhallen Blizzard applied, our Caradron is complete. And that's how I like to do my bases for these guys. I kind of like seeing the idea of them way up in the mountains and uh, guarding those passes and what have you. Being sky pirates, well, privateers, <laughs> let's say. Uh, you know, I like the idea of really high mountaintop look for them. And I think it sets off the color scheme really well. So as ever, guys, if you enjoyed anything or found something useful there, feel free to drop a comment down there in the old box below. As well, my Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too, and I'm pretty chatty on those. As well, this is one of the videos made possible with the support of my lovely patrons over at How I Patreon, which I am going to keep saying it that way because it always makes me laugh and I am very easily entertained. So as ever, guys, thank you very much for your time. You all enjoy the rest of your day.